And here we are. <clears throat> Hi, everybody. Thanks for... Oh, no one's here? <laughs> How do you know? Hello, everybody. <clears throat> Welcome to The Revolving Door, part four. Thanks for joining us today. We are uh, just uh, waiting for our guest, uh, Laura Condlin, to join us. So as soon as she does, we'll begin our conversation. But we've been talking with Ryan Cunningham and with uh, Alistair Newton and with Walter Borden, having really open conversations about coming out and uh, about being queer in the arts. And we are going to go live with Laura Condlin here. Get my uh, Instagram <laughs> remedialness as we go here. And oh, and there she is. Hi. Hi, Laura. Can you hear me? I can hear you very well, darling. Okay. Well, that's exciting. Marvelous. Hi. I can hear you. Hi, well, I, I interrupted your train of thought. Don't mind me. I'm no, sorry. I was just uh, <laughs> welcoming our, our guests as they were arriving just prior to hooking up with you. So wow. welcome today. Hi, and, you look fabulous. Uh, How's your day been so far? It's been really beautiful very and really interesting and wide varieties of viewpoints and interesting ways people overlap too and connect in their experience. So yeah, it's called The Revolving Door inspired by the great Mae West, who described the closet as having a revolving door. And I, and I was really uh, attracted to this idea of not thinking about a sort of binary of being oppressed and closeted and then out and all of a sudden everything's fine. Like that there's something a bit more fluid going on. And I find like I'm always coming out, like every time, like I feel like I'm coming out right now. I'm coming out on Instagram, I'm, okay. you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's ongoing and it's so great to have you with us as a guest and and i should say to folks who have been following some of the promotion originally our plan was to have laura and her partner uh jane gooderham which is also a kind of beautiful thing too of working together uh and being lovers as they say <laughs> but jane got called away to work jane got she did and a late sends call. the most enormous apologies so um, to you and to you know all um, well, everything we, that was about what got into today for so yeah huge apologies well, you're, you're stuck with me she is the brains of the operation so <laughs> best of luck everybody <laughs> best of luck well you've got some pretty good brains yourself my friend and uh I want to just introduce Laura to our, our listeners today. And uh, Laura yes. Condlin spent 14 seasons with the Stratford Festival. And, and that's actually where I met you, Laura, eh? Like yes. in the washroom of down the street. <laughs> I can't Laura, believe I you remember it. that. that is oh, so I, I'll never forget it. I'll <laughs> never forget it. I, like, I don't know you, but I like you. We should talk. And here we are like 20 years later. Amazing. It's got to be 20 years. That was 20 years ago. Oh, at least. Yeah. 2002 yeah. or three. Yeah. Four? Yeah. Oh, earlier. Yeah. Oh, so boy. <laughs> that we, so that was our, that's our little connection there. But at the Stratford Festival, Laura's appeared in many roles and many productions, including Othello, The Back Eye, The Virgin Trial, The Matchmaker, Electra, Peter Pan, uh, tons of Shakespeare, the Duchess of Malfi, mm -hmm. and interestingly playing uh, a variety of parts in a variety of plays by both queer authors and unidentified orientation authors, men and women, like people who identify in lots of different ways. And so uh, I'm curious about some of that when we talk today. And <clears throat> Laura's appeared uh, in productions across the country with Soul Pepper, Tarragon, Crows, Can Stage, NAC, MTC, Seagull, The Grand, The Globe, Your Aquarius. Like, you've, you've been busy. 
You've been a busy person. And I'm very fortunate. Laura is the two time Toronto Theater Critics Award winner for Best Actress in 2016, where she appeared in Enemy of the People. And you put that in, in Enemy of the People, which is an Ibsen play, you played a role originally devised for a man to play, right? Correct. Or the Ibsen. Yeah. And so you brought a, your own identity and a contemporary identity uh, towards that. And in 2018, uh, a lot of our listeners and a lot of theater people will remember Laura was in Fun Home, the, the musical based on the the graphic novels of Alison Bechtel, which is so rare. Like there's a, a lesbian work like playing a totally. lesbian. Just brilliant. Right up there. Yeah. So it's, it's great to have you and the enormous experiences in the theater you bring and in your life you bring. And, and what we're really talking today is about how those two things connect. Yeah. The life, the life that you live and the theater that you make. And so I, I, I wanted to start um, to see if you had a story uh, of coming out that you would like to share that <laughs> you recall. Um, I mean, yeah, of course, I guess. Like, it's all, yeah. it's all part of the journey. And yeah. she's not here, so I can say whatever I want, right? Yeah, right <laughs> I'm right. just kidding. Um, I mean, I, can't, I, I kind of arrived at uh, an understanding kind of late. I, I right. was uh, really scattered in my late teens and early 20s and was all over the place searching for things um with people with whatever but i and i would say like look you know hindsight they say of course is yeah. when i so looking back now there are so many clues there are so many turns i didn't take that were so very mm. obvious at the time and um but i it really really wasn't until i fell like madly deeply in love with Jane Goodaround mm -hmm. that I, mm -hmm. that everything made sense. So, um, and she was the first woman I fell in love with. She like mind, body and soul. And it was like the love that like poets speak of. It was everything that they say that the, the kind of the electric, the powerful, the completely, um, the paralysis, the obsession, like, like all of it was just, it was so all consuming. Um, so like the bells, the alarm bells, the flags, like how many terrible analogies can I put into one sentence? But anyway, or, um, but um, it was that. And so I like ran smack into that and I chased it, pursued it, wanted it with every fiber of my being. And, um, wow. It that so like in those moments, in those weeks of agony where I remember like smoking my brains out in the middle of the night, pacing mm -hmm. the streets of Stratford, like and we <laughs> met during a working relationship, so it wasn't exactly like, you know, professional right. my best right. friend, right? Yes. <laughs> but anyway, I uh it was an overflowing um need and uh yeah. and then inside of all of that a lot of questions that I may or may not have yeah. realized I had made all the sense in the world. And I had the answers to them. And um, I mean, what an amazing thing that I turn around almost 17 years later wow. and we are still that. <laughs> oh, I, wow. You know, and I, I, I had tons of gay friends. I had been pursued by other women in the past and had just had not had the courage to do it. Like, so it just mm -hmm. wasn't until like, I felt it, I felt it all. And, wow. um, and I was like, you know, I, I, I thought I had really open parents and I, it's, it's interesting because it, the reverse reaction was actually what I received. Jane says this very articulately. She says, you know, the hardest thing about coming out is facing sadness in mm -hmm. the people that you love, who you tell, and, you know, they can be as liberal and open-minded 
as they come and then suddenly it's on their front doorstep with either it's a family member or somebody close to them and whether it's their worry oh, yeah. for you because life might yeah. be challenging and hard and full of hurdles or but they there is a kind mm. of concern and a sadness rather than joy perhaps exactly so yeah. you know and it's funny because my mom was a uh, hippie she dealt harsh she slept with her professors like she was kind of like as <laughs> wild particularly in her younger years and my dad is yeah or what i thought was more straight kind of really conservative straight laced and they in fact mm. had the opposite reaction oh is that right I was deeply deeply concerned and shaken Wow. And my dad basically looked up from his book and he was like, okay. And then he went back to his book. I mean, well, wow. anyway, that is a very long and winding road. Yeah. Of, but that is. With, with lots of revolutions in it, like lots of turns. Like, you know, it's not just, yeah. I knew all the time. I never told anybody that this day this happened and I came out and then I was out. Yeah, it's not as straightforward. It's not straightforward for me anyway. It wasn't, but I do, I mean, yeah. I do look back and I think, oh, yeah. so many things make sense. At when I have come, when I have now understood what my full self is. Yes. You know? Yes, indeed. So. Now, with theater making mm -hmm. and being an actor and leading a public life, but that's an interesting thing about us as artists is we we live our lives publicly and privately and navigate yeah. that together. Do you remember the first lesbian character in a film or a play that made an impact on you? The first time you maybe saw a story enacted that you went, yeah. wow. I've been thinking a lot about this and yes. because You know, I, I think this year, I don't know why. I mean, maybe it's just because things are coming into focus in a different way. Maybe it's because of the pandemic and there's been so much time yeah, to yeah. think and sit inside sure. one's thoughts and to really examine or reflect. But I, I can't, even like what was available? I, I, yeah. I've been racking my brain about what was available. And even five years ago, like there, like Carol, so Carol, Gentleman Jack, um, oh, yeah. like even 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 a few years ago, there were great great lesbian uh, relationship sex scenes on How to Get Away with Murder. Thank you, Shonda Rhimes. Like there were, you know, recently Mayor of East Town, beautiful beautiful depiction of a young lesbian woman um, in a couple different kinds of love. And I was trying to think of like, what is that for me? What is that? I didn't have access to that. And right. Part of me makes me think, part of that is like, I didn't look hard enough. My, my net wasn't cast wide enough. Um, maybe I wasn't examining queer culture in the way that I could be now. I'm learning something, I'm learning so much. But I would say um, that it's not a character, but it would be a moment in the theater where I was in New York um, with one of my best friends, Kyle Blair. Who Kyle Blair! I think you know. Oh, and yeah. we were at a performance of Doubt. Mm -hmm. And at the oh. end of the performance was the Actors Fund speech. And Cherry Jones was playing the central character. Oh, yes. That. And she, it wasn't, it's not a lesbian part. Well, I mean, hey, who, uh, we could get into this conversation. I mean, she's a nun, so who knows? But like, hey. Uh, so, but she addressed <laughs> the audience like wow. Cherry. fully, openly as herself. She was so articulate, intelligent, funny. Wow, <laughs> she yeah. helped, the theater was packed. Yeah. I think it either had been nominated and or won a bunch of Tonys or was mm -hmm. like the buzz was just hot. And she is an openly gay woman and I knew that. And I was also, so this was actually, this was, this was right mm -hmm. as I was understanding who I was. Jane and I were just fresh. I was in my early twenties. And I just was completely enamored with her. And I think I look back on that now as like um, a game changer moment. And even, and I didn't realize it at the time, but like um, a moment of mentorship, which sounds nuts because of course I've never met her. And she was like so far, but it was, 
Oh, yeah, the mentors in our mind. Well, the but, but, oh, but, of yeah, course. There she yeah. Was, she, was, she was just, and I guess I keep, she was just yeah. openly herself, and it was amazing. She was wow, so strong yeah. and so, so um, amazing and so famous, and so, and that's not part of it, but it's, it is about being visible. Yeah. And yeah. that, for visible. me, had not yet wow. really been part of the equation. And in right. fact, I would argue still, that is something I have still struggled with yeah for many reasons um through up until now and that is something like i think we'll maybe talk about this later in terms of like yeah accessing and conversations with queer youth and maybe community but that is some so that is a full circle for yeah. me like how to be visible how to be yeah and that doesn't necessarily <laughs> mean political but it does mean yeah. like i want to be my full self and i want to do what i do and just yeah. have that be. I just want to live. Yeah. I just want to live my life and do my art. And I feel like the first time I saw that was with her. Wow. Yeah. And the, and uh, someone like Cherry who can bring her her full self to the work that she does. Yeah. Amazing. I think. Like, do you think that there's um, you know, an old adage about actors that if actors come out then people won't be able to believe them in romantic straight parts or like, do you remember when Jodie Foster came out and yeah. there was a kind of cynicism I found on social media, like, Oh, oh. yeah, we didn't know. Like we all knew or something like that. Yeah. That is significant. Like that is really significant. It's, it's huge. And I, I, I would not downplay the effect of that. Yeah. I would 100% confess that I have fallen um, fall into the fears of that. Yeah. But I, you know, the closet <laughs> and the revolving yeah. doors of the closet and the, yeah. the gradation of the closet, how deep, <laughs> how yeah. shallow, how veiled, how not. Like I, yeah. the dress, the, the makeup for a woman, like, and, so another part of this big, this conversation, and I have to thank you for kind of asking for the archeological dig, the <laughs> introspective dig, right, because right. it is like, I would say in terms what, inter what you said about casting and um, that there is a level of hiding mm. that I felt that I was guilty of mm. by, because of wanting to appeal and because yeah. in my, and work. In and my work. world, yeah. yeah, in my world, a couple of things. In my world, I was specifically trying to survive in a classical company mm. where being a woman, a cis woman, is hard enough. And 99, 100% nine, of the parts are for arguably on the page or with, through a biased lens, heterosexual yeah. parts. Yeah. being cast by heterosexual men. Mm. I was told by an artistic director, I like my women in dresses with lipstick. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. I can do that. I can, I can absolutely do that. But then, then I spend, and so, so the artist career, which is so deeply personal and so vulnerable and so of yourself, for me mm. has been so intertwined in, in my identity. Like totally. I, 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 I have a hard time separating sometimes. So I mean, then yeah. I am, what am I sacrificing? What does it cost me to live through your heteronormative lens? I want to fit into your bias <laughs> because for sure survival of trying to do my art form, try to be represent, just try to be part of it. I felt mm. I have to fit now. I say all this makes me super ashamed <laughs> to say it, but it is part mm. of, I feel, yeah. it, was, it was a huge part of my journey. And yeah. I know that there is a generation that is like coming up behind me and they are so full of identity and power and strength and conviction in their own uh, selves that I, I just simply didn't have. 
Um, I'm, and I'm so inspired yeah. by that. I'm learning more than I ever learned before mm. about queer culture myself, how I fit in and how, how enough is enough, like be seen. I want to live my, I want to be who I am, which is, I am not letting you talk at all. This is like, it's that <laughs> I'm the host. You're the guest. <laughs> anyway, I just like the toll it takes um, to be accepted, but then who who's guilty of that? Yeah. Like it is the framework that is presented. And so oh. this just goes you know back what? to your, your question about but casting. It's so. interesting what the lived experience is, like how you felt being younger at Stratford, like figuring out your your life in the world and, and a very competitive career too. Oh uh, I think I saw that in you. I saw who you were when I first met you. That's what attracted me to you was you weren't like the conventional heteronormative, like classical, you were authentic and different and spontaneous and had opinions and, and great passion. And that's, Thank you. you know, and I'm not saying, oh, I knew you were lesbian and I, no, I, I didn't. I, but I could feel you in that through that kind of institution. And we didn't even work together for the first few seasons. We were just. No. no. Yeah. And it's also, I mean, like, those are very, very generous, kind words, no, Peter. And thank you. And I, but I also feel like there is the danger of even losing that, like gay, mm. straight, whatever inside the umbrella like yeah like yeah. losing sight of your convictions losing sight of your spontaneity spontaneity and mm. your power and your passion in order to 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 fit in because it is like the business is so mm -hmm. full of casual cruelty it's so full of just like fickle right. everything and that is the nature of it and that's like it's it's yeah. it's, it's it's part of the the highs and lows, but the highs are that if you ride those waves and you make beautiful things, you tell incredible stories. And I sure. don't like the lesbian lens, the lesbian voice, if there isn't, if there is even one is like, I don't, it doesn't, it's not the only thing I want to do, but I do also want it to be present. I want it to be represented. Yeah. 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 Do you no. think like um like the role training plays on that? Like oh. like I think about young queer folks in theater schools and you know, as I shared with you in our in our prep for this, like from my experience in theater school was all about learning how to be straight. Like that was the note I got all the time was Peter, you read like a gay guy, which I didn't want to. Like I was so well that was bad in yeah. that time. And so I had all this shame about my sexuality and had to learn how to perform to be straight. Yeah. Because I was told you'll never work if I was myself. So it was a weird contradiction to live with. Like, oh, I'll never work if I'm drilling myself. Yeah. And so I kind of oh. took it on like, oh, well, you know, uh, being an actor is transforming, but... I felt like I spent my whole time at theater school learning how to pass as straight. Yeah, that's not okay. Um, no. And I wish, I wish our Jane was here <laughs> to yeah. take this question because of course she has spent so long in training okay. and she is so, she believes yeah. so passionately in the nurturing of young people and young talent. And, yeah. And she, I think what like, but enough of the time of being invisible, enough of the time yeah. of being yeah. ironed out, ironed out. And again, like I would, I feel like we're either, it is already different and, and we are also on the brink of something even bigger, better, different, right? Like I just yeah, feel yeah. like the time, the wave is, yes. and it's coming with great power. And I, I think both things are possible. But is, it is essential. The priority has to be the individual, the person, yeah. that form of expression. Yeah. But I and still cannot... maybe Maybe it's to like turning our heads around to think that our queerness is the key to our fullness rather than some sort of limitation of oh, <clears throat> our own bias or something. Yeah. 
Yeah. And, yeah. and, and releasing into that, leaning into that. But I will also say like, I do still believe that, 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 that our job as storytellers is there is a transformation that is part of it. Oh, totally. Like I want to be, I want to be so good. I want to be so flexible at what yeah. I do that I can, I can do it all. Yeah. <laughs> Not that anyone's going to hire me to do it. But I, I want to feel like I can do it all. I want to access those things. So, so it's like, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, I want to disappear I feel you. inside it. But I also, but I can only do that if I know, and if I hang on and I know 1000% who I am. So that goes away and I go right. inside this and I tell this story for a while. Right. And then I come out of that and I'm me, but I haven't sacrificed me. Of course. It's like, yeah. it's like that amazing magic, that thoroughbred magic. Like, and I feel like that's possible. So yeah. there's no sacrifice and there's no, um, yeah. I don't know if that makes sense. I wish she was here. She would speak so articulately uh, you're about doing, that. No, you're doing great. You are speaking. You're speaking your truth, and you're speaking it really, really beautifully. Thank you. Um, okay. <laughs> We've kind of touched on this one already, mm -hmm. but you know, let's see. Like, you know, what does the closet mean to you, personally, historically, in your work, and beyond it? And does this? image of Mae West, the revolving door, does that resonate with you, that in and out? Well, yeah. I mean, I guess I'm going to be wary of repeating myself, but like, mm -hmm. again, personally, professionally, like I feel like the closet, had, I feel like that revolving door, and I've only learned this term when you introduced yeah. it to oh, me. Okay. Um, I feel it's really apt, and I feel you know, I never, I never was, I've never taken a look at a lot of parts and thought, oh, maybe she's gay. Just mm. never done that. And now I think, did I just simply not have the imagination or was I stuck in somebody else's bias? And so I just assumed that, you mm. know, but I also you know, does an, a, a never married and alone, independent, outspoken woman, does that just, <laughs> is that code yeah. for something? Or is she just, is that just who she is? Like, I just, I feel a bit like I never really investigated those options. But again, I, I also haven't even really come across those parts yet. Like I haven't, this is not the answer to your question. I'm going a bit off track here, but no. in, in terms You're of the closet the and who's in the closet, um, like there's so many represent representatives in literature, like the shame and the agony that comes with mm -hmm. being in the closet in a character, uh, in, in a piece of literature or, or theater or whatever. Yeah. And then the, the kind of the heavy burden of having to be not out socially or social isolation if you are out publicly out or any of those things. And, you know, so there's that whole world of characters that carries with it such a suffering, which I feel is so harmful to a community that has already yeah. um, uh, been weighed down with such abuse of that kind, that I'm not sure that any of those closeted characters are super helpful. <laughs> They're not yeah. really... But again, like I said earlier, there's so much more available now. There's more... Yeah. There's really more coming. And, and hopefully there's more ways to uh, explore that in the rehearsal room, like 100%. to be able to have a dialogue about that, right? A hundred percent. And in terms of like me, Laura, living in different stages of the closet, like I, again, in examining this kind of conversation, I have just, it, yeah. has, it has, I have realized I have been often the one in the, in the room yeah right. in the dressing room and i do not say that because there has been anything that has happened mm -hmm. that is there has been no no homophobia no no discomfort no alienation none of that but it is something to clock yeah. <laughs> that yeah. you're the only one yeah and the levels to which you make people comfortable, depending on the topic of conversation, depending on that. But it's not, I was, 
yes, I can count on my hand, one hand, two, two fingers, in fact, the, the number of times I've played a character that is, rep, that is close to myself. Yeah. Where many, many, many other, I don't want to put words in anybody's mouth, that's not fair, but many of the straight women that I know and admire and adore in this business yeah. have been playing parts that are very close to them for a very long time. Totally. And it's, see, that's, it's so interesting to me what you're talking about because um, I think it's so related to this idea of uh, one sexuality uh, for queer people is considered a limit where... Yeah. You know, I've had people say to me, oh, it's not just a gay story, it's a love story. As though my gayness were some limited way yeah, of- but reduce it. Yeah, and I go, yeah. yeah, but isn't a gay love story about love too? Like, yeah, and, love and totally. just, You know, looking at some of the roles you've played in the classical repertoire, it's interesting to think about a really, I think, radical voice of like Amelia and Othello, who is critical. Yeah. Patriarchy. She's critical of. Totally. And there is a way that that could go. You know, I was thinking about that. I th yeah. That might have come up the other day. And, yeah. you know, I just did a production of that. And <laughs> again, I have to be like, I, it, it just never occurred to me. But also because in that play, like, so, so, but it would be, would be interesting if Iago was also a woman. Like, oh, yeah. so, okay. like, how is that how that would work? Because my focus in the production that I just did was on a very abusive relationship with a man. Right. And the, the marriage was toxic and he yeah. was toxic. And, and that, yeah. was my, that, was a, that was my sole focus, uh, the misogyny of that. Yeah. Um, but it, it could spin. It could spin. Of course yeah. it could. And, I mean, and it's also, yeah, <clears throat> it's also a tragic story. So it's oh entering into the, the things that pull society down, that it's, it's, it's unearthing yeah. uh, a problem. And, you know, you've also played, which I think is so interesting, Irene Malloy and the Matchmaker by a known homosexual playwright. I know. But the story is all in the heteronormative tropes, right? <laughs> And is Wilder, Thornton Wilder, who wrote The Matchmaker, satirizing that, pointing, commenting on that, critique. So there's something really interesting in that, that there's a queer voice lurking all through The Matchmaker, but it's codified, so it's really codified. Yeah. yeah. Can I confess something to you, though? Yeah. Yeah. With a deep fear that I'm going to lose my shit. Um, I, that production <laughs> of The Matchmaker. Yeah. I'm not, I can't believe I'm going to say this, but I was like, I was so proud. Of, I loved that show so much. I loved mm -hmm. that show. I loved being in love. I loved, I loved the energy of the show. I loved the whimsy. I loved the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, this is how much I have to learn. This is how much I have to grow inside mm -hmm. my queer culture. This is how much I have to like mm -hmm. grab the hold, the reins of this, like the political life, the visibility of this life. But I was like, I did it. I did it. I made people believe that I was. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? No. That I ended up being like, mm. I thought that was a triumph. <laughs> they believed me. They oh, bought that I was in love with Mike Shara. What is Our... that? Therapy? Like, oh my <laughs> God. <laughs> what, what? Oh, I so feel you. I so relate to you. But I, but I, but nobody ever. So thank you, Chris Abraham. Nobody had ever cast me in a romantic lead before. Right. And they put me in a long wig and a gorgeous, gorgeous Santa Lacoste yeah. costumes. Oh my God, they were amazing. Yeah. And I did it. Yeah. I was a, I was a love interest, a hetero love interest. Anyway, we don't have to stay on this, but I, I have come to realize that I was kind of like, it's related. Like there was once when um, a Canadian stage was looking at different ways of, at, you know, dealing with the dream in High Park. <clears throat> and uh, Liza Balkan did this reading of Much Ado About Nothing with all older actors, all older actors. Yeah. And what was so incredible, Nancy Beattie read uh, Hero. 
And what was so amazing, because she just embraced Hero as the, a comic creation. When I see younger actors play Hero, mm -hmm. it's much more problematic because they are faced with the realities and the judgments that Hero is faced with. Nancy didn't have any of that. So Nancy, in like, you know, she was like, like not 20 years old and <laughs> read it with wow. satire, with irony and a freedom in it. And the play read differently, not softer by any means, but differently. And I think there's something you're speaking to about when the drama of the character is your drama. And when it's not, you can really fully yeah. give yeah. yourself to it. Yeah, and code switching, I guess, too, is in there. But like, yeah, oh, my gosh. all, of, all yeah. of it. Yeah, because the only, yeah. like, the, the two times that I have actually, you know, really been able to meet my person yeah. with the material has been Enemy of the People. Because, and Richard right. Rose is to thank for that, because uh, I... He put, he put a woman in the center of that play as the doctor. He put me in there. Mm -hmm. And it, yes, you're right. Not only is the original written for right. a man, but also the contemporary adaptation that was, was, based that was, yeah. was, was originally performed by a man. Yeah. But there, he's married with a family. Yeah. And so for the first time, I mean, I entered a with a baby family. carriage. I had a wife. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hadn't, you were, you hadn't were representing been able to and do that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And and playing and then, Starkman, the great whistleblower, right? The the, the yeah, the truth what, an incredible, what an incredible thing to have a lesbian voice, like. But yeah. also, I didn't. It wasn't. I wasn't concerned. So the other thing is that I. That's I think I am also a very literal actor. Like I just want to. I just sort of mostly. Um, I look. Mm. I try to look straight down the barrel. Of things like right down the center so i wasn't it wasn't about playing the doctor as a lesbian actually it was just part of her life it was yeah, part yeah. of her identity it was part of the the whole world picture of it yeah but, but you yeah. welcome it. that's that's exactly it though you're bringing your your full self to realize starkman and it's okay yeah. in this version starkman's got a wife and got kids exactly and yeah. you can bring that right in it's not a it's not a limit or a special interest or a yeah it's it's a foundation it's a wellspring for your creativity and it's so sorry to God, just keep interrupting you i'm so sorry oh. i do want to say because i was interviewed um f for the paper for that show and the journalist really really wanted the angle to be oh, about so. dr stockman being gay oh. and i was like it's not the focus like yeah. the science, the whistleblowing is the focus, the standing up in front of the world and speaking truth and about, uh, against corruption and like the power Climate change, of the yeah. truth is the point. Yeah. It doesn't matter yeah. that she's gay. I mean, it does, but it, as you just said, like it's part of the fabric of she's bringing her whole self yeah. to it, but it's not the, like it's not, it doesn't change the truth, the center of the message of the play. It's not about that. It just, is part of it and wouldn't it be great if we and this is the thing where I feel like what is available now in terms of the material and what we're listening to and watching and seeing is that it's no longer this problem that needs to be dealt with it's just part of the fabric of the story yeah. it just yeah. is nobody questions yeah. it yeah that's what was so great about this mayor of East Town is that this storyline was that this daughter yeah. She's a lesbian and it's not, there's no crisis in the family about it. It, yeah. it just is. Yeah. So we meet yeah. the family and they are in full swing in their lives. Yeah. And I just think that's, that's the visibility that I'm See, interested it's, in. It's a, just, it's a subtle distinction, but you can really sense it when the queerness of a character is centralized as the problem in the play. Yeah. That is centralizing actually sort of heteronormativity that this is the normal world and then the lesbian comes in. <laughs> what, what, watch out. <laughs> and whoa, does the town cope? Do they cope or not? Yeah. Right? Rather than there's a world with lesbians in it yeah. and this is what happens. That's right. And it's, uh, it's so subtle, but it's about what gets centralized. Like 
I was really, I thought it was really interesting when I directed the play uh, An Octoroon by Brandon Jacob Jenkins, right? Such a good production, Peter. Oh um, my word. It was so interesting to work on. And it's based on a 19th century melodrama by Dion Boussico called The Octoroon. And wow. that adjustment that BJJ makes from the octoroon, the singular, the only one, the white world, and the octoroon to an octoroon. This is a story of mm -hmm. millions of folks. An octoroon. I see. But this story isn't singular. It's representing a lot of people and a lot of reality. That's great. It is. It's, you know. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Anne, Anne Carson does that too. And yeah. uh, her collection, the Greek plays, The Oristia, she yeah. called and Oristia. Like mm -hmm. it's one of yeah, it's not the only telling. Yeah. It's not the preeminent one. I, ha I have to ask because I think a lot of people are curious and thinking. So you get to 2018, playing all these different parts you have played. Yeah. And those Toronto theater critics, <laughs> they've rewarded you twice. Uh, you're doing Fun Home. Oh. What was that like? What, like, did you know about Fun Home before you auditioned? Did you, or is it a part you always wanted to do? Was, tell no, me that, tell I mean, the I story. I didn't know it. Again, like, oh boy, I really have to expand my queer yeah. radar out yeah. into what is happening. But I was sent the music and I remember listening to it. I, re I remember I was staying in the most beautiful loft in Montreal at the time. Mm -hmm. And I was sent the material to have a listen. And I, um, I, I was sitting in the window looking out at the pier at the water and I, I didn't even feel the passage of time. I just, and I was, I was just weeping the whole, I listened to the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And I'd heard about it because the buzz of the Tonys and I remember, yeah. um, but Alison Bechdel was not on my radar. I had not, mm -hmm. um, I had not seen any of her stuff. Mm -hmm. Anyway, went out, got the source material and I, I worked hard <laughs> to book that gig because that is not, I, I love musicals so much. I love them. I can't really do them. Um, I, that is not a muscle that I do not have that thoroughbred muscle as many of the performers that we oh, both nice. know and love can just like kill it. That's not me, but I wanted it so bad because for all the reasons that we were already talking about for the first time, like, there was uh, something I recognized, something I had like a kinship to oh, yeah. in the center of uh, quite what I believed was a phenomenal piece of art mm. and storytelling. And I, I wanted to do that. And anyway, it, 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 it worked out. I, 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 um, I had a lot of work to do in terms like musically, but it, it, it worked out and it is the highlight yeah. of my creative life it is it had a profound effect on me um the mm. creative team was incredible they were tremendous um mm. and uh everybody the whole from top to bottom the whole thing was uh extraordinary and every night i was i felt a kind of power and responsibility to be the center, the dignified, intelligent, articulate, hopefully funny, maybe moving voice, gay voice in the center of that piece, that very, very important piece that has so many levels of queer um, exploration inside it. Yeah. But for the first time ever, the lesbian voice is at the center. Wow. You told I, me that, like, during the run of that show, you went to every Q and A, every audience talk back, yeah, every I did. Q &A, like, and I did. Uh, why? I mean, How come? Why, well, why that? We were in downtown Toronto, and yeah. um, we were really right around the corner from the village, and going back to my experience, like with Cherry Jones. This is a disaster. I am a mess. <laughs> um, Beautiful. My, uh, going back to that, like I did feel I wanted to be visible. I wanted to be available. Mm. I wanted to be present and open. Yeah. Um, uh, I wanted to answer any questions from anybody, any age, size, 
any human who had a question for me, I wanted to answer it because I wanted to be present and available if, if there was a young person out there who did what I did when I saw Cherry Jones. Like I wanted to kind of join the river of that. I hesitate to use the word mentor because I don't necessarily consider myself that, but I did feel a responsibility to be there, to serve, to hold the space for anyone in the community, gay or straight who wanted to unpack anything. And they did, they did every time. Um, it was, it taught me so much. I ended up yeah. doing workshops with queer youth and trauma. Oh. They taught me, oh my gosh, like- Well, it's, like, you know how rare it is, right? To see your story, to see a life you live, a love you love, to yeah. see it. That's right. so rare. That's right. And because you're getting tons of love here on the chat, Laura. I got to tell you, you're getting lots of love here oh, on the chat. I can't see a thing. People right? telling you <laughs> that you're not a mess. You're real and open and vulnerable. I love it. And oh, that's nice. Right. Thank you. And people loving your but work. You know, it just, um, it was so important to me. And I felt, yeah. I felt a responsibility, but a, 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 not in an arrogant way, but in a way that I, uh, it's about like keeping it all open, right? Yeah. Did it feel different? Like when you were like, you know, I'm so not an actor, but I've acted a little bit. And I know when I've played gay parts, I just feel freer. I can, I don't, I'm not so worried about, I yeah. still carry maybe like you're saying this fear that people are going to like, I'm not going to. Oh yeah. Make it. I go back to the schoolyard where I was bullied and made fun of and, Oh, living yeah. a bit of terror about that. So you must have felt such liberation too. Definitely. Definitely. And like getting to know that I felt like I just became obsessed with Alison Bechdel. Like she's such a oh, genius. Yeah. She's so brilliant. Okay. So the source material just couldn't have been better to hold on to in terms of like having a foundation to feel that liberation, to be yes. seen, to feel free. I also had like, it was also like full of terror because I was doing something, I was doing like the scariest thing ever. But I also, in a funny sort of way, I felt great, great um, stability in doing that because I trusted that I, that, that, that I, like my person, my profession and my politics were all kind of like coming into a thing. So, oh, I mean, yeah. the chords went in that, in that opening and I just was in every time and Terror, love, like free fall, all of it. Oh my um, God. It was, it was extraordinary. And you're right. There was a kind of greater yeah. oneness wow. than perhaps I have ever felt. And incredible. I don't know. That did it, it change your different. acting? Did it, did it teach you things about acting, about yourself as an actor? Like did, when you finished Fun Home, hmm. did you... Were your muscles different? Were your actor bones a bit different? Did you, did you, with the next I, part you went into, did you go, oh, I'm a different person now? But. That's an interesting, that's a really great question. I feel mm -hmm. like my courage was different. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I'm not sure that my, my, my skill changed or anything, but my courage was different. And also my world picture was different maybe. So right. maybe I'm bringing that into the projects that have come and are coming since that time. Wow. I do feel changed actually. No, I, and I'm not sure I can articulate it for it, but I do feel, because I also think I came into focus for myself. Aha, uh aha. -huh, uh -huh. Inside it's, my work and inside my own yeah. person. I don't know how to articulate it, but I find it so interesting this such fine line where when we create, we are our purest selves and yet we're transformed too. There's both a mask mm -hmm. and an authenticity. Mm -hmm. It's not just confessional, you come out and play yourself and present no. to a public who you are in life. Because, okay, the character you played in Fun Home is not Laura Conlon. No. <laughs> They're totally different folks. No, you're so right. And I feel, I actually do feel like I, in, so this is such an interesting thing because I feel I feel like I disappeared inside of that more than yeah. ever. And yeah. yet at the same time, I feel the shimmer, it was shimmering so close to me 
um, mm. the closest it's ever come in terms of my yeah. work. But it's fun. Like I, I turned 40 the year I did Fun Home. Okay. And I cut off all my hair to do the part. Talk about coats mm. and closets. So I had like, you know, oh, a line cut, I had bangs, and I had like this whole thing. Um, clever disguise, <laughs> I guess, mm. or something. And I cut my hair. I cut my hair. Uh, Rachel Maddow is a really big presence in our house. And she is totally, like, totally so sexy and smart and fantastic. And she has great hair and great glasses. And so she was on the cover of Vanity Fair. And I took it to my hairdresser and I said, this is, and I took the Alison Bechdel. And I said, somewhere in here, this is who I need to be. And so I cut my hair. Wow. And I had glasses for the show. And I had to be yeah. left-handed. Like there were all these amazing transformations. Oh like I just like went down this whole kind of, uh, pipeline mm. of I'm somebody else but it was like a superpower like I felt like I put the glasses on in the dressing room and I looked at myself and I didn't recognize myself also because like my haircut was like two weeks old it was two weeks before opening when I did it and like I was just another person but I also the world received me as a different person it's so interesting oh yeah oh, walking yeah. down the street with short 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 hair it was so, it was like a sociological experiment. It was amazing, <laughs> particularly with men. You could just yeah. see, you could see they were like, a lot, a lot, and they made a decision. They weren't wrong. <laughs> I don't, I, I, but it was interesting. I was like, and suddenly you, someone you know, else, though, so I'm not like sure. The where conversation I, would change if there was more representation with directors and artists, like there were more lesbians in positions of interpreting parts and casting parts and you know totally i mean i yeah. can i can count on one hand the number of female directors i've worked with well, was that right, eh? wow. and be uh, on the other hand i can count the number of queer directors I, i've worked with and everybody else has been a hetero male wow yeah well i don't know why i'm acting so surprised but i am i guess because yeah. but so they're you know, yeah. navigating that bias and navigating yeah. that lens has always been part of it. But I do feel like we are on the brink of enough. <laughs> and, you know, bring those authentic voices and have them present and be visible. And yeah, like we, the, the education is ongoing, um, yeah. you know, I think for our, for our community and to, yeah to push for change and so to have those voices okay. in the center and not on the fringe, you know? Uh, it's kind of like a poppy kind of subject, but it's, it, it, it resonates. Like, um, like in, in my home, my husband and I, we often have these conversations about, uh, <laughs> you know, gay playing straight, straight yeah. playing gay, like where there's this kind of, Mm -hmm. honorable academy award lurking for the straight male actor who plays a homosexual yeah, yeah. character oh, yeah. and yet a nervousness about a gay actor playing a straight character what what is your take on that what do you think about like uh straight women playing lesbian parts and like what's your what's your take on it are you for against in between it depends well, it's very, very um, insulting and irritating when it seems to be like, oh my God, what a massive change she made. <laughs> what a, like, it must feel so hard. Uh, that terrifies me. That is not, that is very harmful and not helpful. Yeah. But I also am not sure that I live in the camp of, we should only tell our own stories. Like, I'm not right. sure I live there. Stay in your own lane, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure. I want, I cross-pollination I think is super helpful. And I think, but I also think, Move out of the way a little bit because you've been, yeah. you've had enough space and time for a while. That sounds very aggressive. Yeah. I don't mean it to sound that aggressive, mm. but uh, I think I yeah. Circling back to what I said earlier, like I want the I I do I want fun home for sure for me. Like I they were they consciously put a gay woman in the center of that. Yeah, that was important value. And I that. am forever, yeah. uh, forever deeply grateful for that yeah yeah and i think it is important i think i i do i think it was very very important to have the visibility and the representation and the authentic voices but 
I also, and maybe we just have to live there for a while because it hasn't been happening. I mean, I can come up with several productions that were queer narratives and there wasn't a queer representation in the room. Yeah. Artistic yeah. team on the stage. Like, yeah, yeah. Behind the scenes. Yeah. N not okay anymore. Yeah, yeah. And so maybe maybe we have to live yeah. really for a while in having the authentic representation, yeah. those voices be in the center and be clear yeah. and loud and openly themselves. Yeah. But I also think yeah, anyways, but I don't want to I don't want to get stuck there because I think it's important that we that it, that there that there is flow. Yeah. Right? That's where like the rev the revolving door part. Yeah. Yeah, it can mean in and out, but it can also be like uh, you know, Ryan Cunningham was offered a teaching of it as a spiral, right? As uh Oh, what a beautiful it have a beginning and middle and end, but that there's uh, evolution to it and uh mm -hmm. I really, I, I really hear that. And I think that, I think there's something, I don't know, the goddess is laughing that the two roles you've been, got those awards for, both oh. had this, I think it's hilarious. Because it I've goes never, against the idea I've about, never even thought about that. you know, like you better stay in the closet, stay like uh, to be the success, that uh, you get two awards for playing lesbian characters. Like it's interesting from very different. Peter, I've never even clocked that. Isn't that so, wow. Yeah, <laughs> just wow. Well, you know. Yeah, but, so like, I, 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 um, I think too, Laura, about um, like it is a bit of a hokey question, but I do really like it, which is like, what would you say to a young queer actor today who might be out listening or yeah, yeah, maybe yeah. No. saw Fun Home or didn't see Fun Home or your fifteen-year-old self, like? I, uh, my 15 year old self <laughs> requires all the I'm interested guided. to hear what you would say to yourself. Oh, I guess I, I would say something to the effect of uh, life is long. You don't have to be right all the time. You don't, I always felt so pressured as a young person to make the right choice, to do the right thing, to, oh, to do the correct yeah. act. And, um, and that I thought I felt so pressured. And I, I look back on that time now when I was a teenager and went, oh, baby, like to be kinder yeah. to myself, you know, a bit. I was, I was hard on myself and thought. That's so true. And I think, yeah. I think in our youth we are, and maybe that never goes away. Oh my gosh, yeah, I struggle yeah. with that now. Yeah. <laughs> um, but we're, we're in such a, a yeah, time of possibility where we're asking questions about the world. And yeah. I think of the, you know, right now there's a whole bunch of young folks applying for the Birmingham Conservatory. And I think yeah. of the queer folks doing that. And I want to think about how they can be their full selves in that training rather than thinking, okay, you better hide. You better get that sibilant ass. So you better yeah. grow your hair long no, and wear a dress. That's, and, that's you know. like no more hiding, no more hiding enough. Uh -huh. And having the courage, which is not necessarily easy. And it comes, and the more, and I think like the more that we as yeah. generations of queer people who are standing on shoulders of generations of queer people who have been fighting yeah, yeah. this good fight for a very, very, very long time, the more we can educate and stay open and support and be available and be present and our whole selves, our true representation, the more we can kind of rally all of that and encourage courage and inhabiting your mm -hmm. whole self in younger people and being available right. to that to educate and stop the microaggressions and yeah, yeah. somehow stop the homophobia and but it is like mm. but i know i also know how important it is and there aren't there is never like the answer everybody's journey is so different i remember i did an it, it gets better video oh yeah years ago and again i was like one of the only female voices in it and I remember mm -hmm. being like, oh my God, I, like, there's nobody else. And of course there are, this is not, I'm not talking about like all of Canadian Actors Equity. I'm talking about yeah, this yeah. project didn't, it was just like, mm -hmm. but it went out and it was, and I received messages online, like over Facebook from 
young, queer, um, questioning um, artists who wanted to reach out and talk. And I was so, so moved by that because I guess it hadn't really occurred to me that it would be effective, <laughs> the message, but it yeah. so is. And again, it loops me back to the Cherry Jones thing, like the importance of that, like just to be. And so in terms of advice, I mean, I think what you say, be kind to yourself, but also like courage, 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 courage. And also enough, like standing up for ourselves. And I, but I also, but I also think that, like I said before, I think the generation behind me is, is way ahead of that. And it's not that that's been easy necessarily. And that it's not that there aren't bumps along the way, but they are so vocal and powerful and have a sense of identity mm. and demand exactly. that in a way that I certainly never experienced. And so I oh, actually well, yeah. am being taught by them in a way. Totally. You know, and I think the canons are changing and hopefully they're there fluid and, you know, gender switching parts and uh, open up the imagination to what is possible. So if we are going to tell these older stories, how can we have a contemporary lens on that so that our world is really represented and this yeah. community is really represented inside. Yeah. And um, decolonize that whole construct of yeah. what the past is, what history is. What yeah, let's get the in there. Let's get messy. Is. And let's, um, let's yeah. do that because yeah. enough, enough of being on the side. Mm. Not that I'm saying like, but I just think, think is this, the, these, these voices need to be in the center. Yeah. yeah. With great, and they, because they have dignity and power yeah. um, and intelligence and everything. When they yeah. deserve it. You're here. Yeah. No more. Thank you, Laura. So like, boy, these conversations, they just, whew, there's so much, there's so much to unpack, isn't there? There's a lot to, uh, what did you call it? Uh, like excavate, like an archeolo archeological <laughs> yeah. dig of our, yeah. ourselves. And so I really, really value your sharing. And oh, no, thank you for offers. having me. And so I know beautiful. Jane sends her love and oh, we send our love to her. regrets, but um, okay. anyway, what a joy to well, be with you. Thank you. Oh yeah. And, and thank you for uh, spinning through the revolving door with me. And, <laughs> uh, okay. Have a great pride and yes. all my love to you, Jane. Okay. You too. Okay. All right. So do I okay. go now? Is that what I do? I just go. That's, that's okay. what I'm doing. You can go. <laughs> Bye-bye. Peace out.